Hello once again, this is Asad and you are welcome to this video. In the previous videos, we spoke of programming and uh, we said programming is basically giving the computer a set of instructions to perform. And now we know we, um, computers do not speak English, they do not speak any human language. So we need to learn to speak with them. What we understand, or what we're always being told everywhere we go, is computers understand zeros and ones. That's true. But it will be very, very difficult for you and I to sit down and type a couple of zeros and ones. That is why we have low level programming languages and high level programming languages. So the low level programming languages take care of the zeros and ones, and the high level programming languages make it um, help us write our code in a more human readable format. So, um, the in whatever interpreter of um, the programming language you are writing in will then trans um, convert it from the high level human readable format to the zeros and to the low level zeros and ones. Okay, and then from there we also saw how we um, could download Python in onto our our personal computers. You just go to python.org and click on download, and then after that just install. That's basically what you have to do. Then we we saw that we need we needed um. A text editor to write Python code. Okay, so we saw how to download and install PyCharm, which is um, a Python specific uh, IDE integrated development environment. And we also saw for for smartphone users, we saw how to download and install PyDirectory from the Play Store. Then from there. We did, we did a couple of prints and input statements and then we saw what values and variables were and we also saw how to add comments to our Python code. And then from there we saw um, errors in Python. We, we took a look at um, the, um, the examples or the type of errors we might run into while we start writing our Python code. And notable among them are semantic errors, logical errors and syntax errors. If you want to review the past video, just um, quickly, do that, uh, quickly do that. It's on YouTube, so just go head over to YouTube and then watch the video all over again. In today's video, we are going to be looking at operators and operands. From there, we do um, a bit of conditional execution. Um, your code will basically have to do something based on certain conditions. So conditional ex execution, what that is all about is um, it compares conditions. When one condition is true, then uh, based on what you are telling to do, it will perform that tax. And if that condition is false, then it will perform another tax. Then after after um, we we've been equipped with this, then we go we go ahead. You know, now we've built some confidence, so we go ahead to do a mini project. So let's get started. Operators are special symbols that represent computations like addition multiplication subtraction division and so on just basic mathematical um, computations the values the operator is applied to are called the operands so the operator is a symbol and the values are the operands so for example 2 plus 3 2 and 3 here are the operands and the plus symbol there is the operator Okay, now the type of operators we'll be looking at in this video are arithmetic operators, comparison operators, and then um, assignment operators. Now, um, in this table, we take a look at the various arithmetic operators that we have in Python that or that Python support. And we already spoke about addition. So, um, what 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 the addition symbol does is, or what the addition operator does is, it adds values of either side of the operator together. For example, one plus one which um would give us three so let's quickly try this we are not going to do do this for all of these operators but let's let, let's just try to do this for your, for a few of them so we just quickly head head, uh, head over to pycharm and let's let's get our hands dirty with some python code so just type one plus three and then you run this code um you can you can, you can either run this by pressing shift plus f10 on your keyboard or simply uh, clicking on this gray run button on your <coughs> on the top right corner of of, of the PyCharm Pi application. If you are on PyDroid, if you are on Android and you are using PyDroid, just um, type one plus three and then you click or you press on that yellow round button at the bottom 
um, right corner of your screen. Okay. Uh, but um, let's say you are you are running this code for the first time in PyCharm. You need to come here to run. So you click on run, and then uh, so let's quickly run this by clicking on the run button. And oh oh sorry, um, we see that we don't get any output because we are not telling the the interpreter to do anything. We are in the um, script mode, so when we need results, we have to tell the the interpreter to print it out. So let's um, let's quickly add a print statement. So let's put it put it in the print. So we say print, sorry, print. Then we open our brackets and we say one plus three. One plus three. Okay. Then uh, we run this code once again. Okay, and we see we get four. One plus three is four. So that is just um. Uh, an illustration of the, um, the plus operator. The same works for subtraction, the same works for multiplication, um, exp exponent, it performs exponential power cal calculation of on operand. So um, 2 power 3, um, let's say, so let's print 2 power 3, okay? So what we need to do is 2, when we need to, um, when we need something like this, we just say 2, then uh, double asterisk, and then 3. Then when we, when we run this, we get eight, which is actually true for um, anywhere. So, it, so you can simply just use Python as as, as a simple calculator. That's that's great. And then um, the version two works for the same way. So it divides the left hand operand by the right hand operand. So three over two is one point five. Now what floor floor division does is it takes off the decimal point, the, the, the decimal part of the number. That's if there's any. So um, for three over two, when we flow, okay. So let's let's just see for three over two, three divided by by two. Okay. So when we run this, we get one point five. But say you don't you don't need the decimal part of it. So um, you need to flow this division. So you, so um, flow division in Python. You do that by three, then double forward slash, then two, and then what that does is it will it will divide and then um remove the decimal part. Okay, so let's let's see that, and then when we, when we run, we see that now we have just one. We have we have been able to flow or to to do floor division. So floor division and division they are more or less the same thing. But division keeps the decimal part, but flow division it 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 does away with the with the decimal part and just brings or just gives you the integer, okay. And that division too works the same way as uh, as division, but what that does is um, it rather it rather divides the right hand operand by the left hand operand. Okay, so when we say three, then uh, maybe back back divide back divide in this. Okay, when we when we do something like this. Okay, so that doesn't work in Python, quite surprisingly. So let me just take that out. Okay, give me a second. Okay, so let's continue. The next thing is um, modulus. Okay, and this is just basically the same thing in um. In algebra so what that does is it divides the left hand operand by the right hand operand and then um, it, re it, it returns the reminder of that so 3 over 2 that we saw earlier on it will be 1 remainder 1 so the, so um, the modulus or what um, the result you will you'll be getting for that is 1 let's 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 see that in action so print and the modulus operator is uh, a percent percent sign or, or a percentage symbol. So three mod, mod two. When we run this, we get one because that's what is remaining. Okay. So um, basically, these these are just things that um, we 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 already come across always in um, basic algebra. So just plus you know addition subtraction multiplication exponentiation division floor division different thing floor division and division is while division keeps the decimal part 
flawed division that does away with the decimal part and modulus returns the remainder okay now let's look at comparison operators these operators compare the values on either sides of the operator and decides the relation between them okay so what it does is it will compare the operands in, on the left side and then on the right side and based on um, the, um, the type of the comparison operator you are, um, you are using you know to compare the two operands it will then um, return either true or false okay so for example let's let's look at the first one double equal sign okay that's um, if the values of the two operands are equal then the condition becomes true okay so for the double equal sign that's the equality operator in python so um, if you want to check let's say for example let's let's check um is three equal to two this is not true so let's 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 see what we do what we get we say we get false three is not equal to two so the equality operator will return true if the condition is true or or if it is true okay so let's say th is three equal to three this is actually true so three equal to three and then we get true okay so let's say we don't we don't really know our values okay doing it this way is, is very is very very plain we, you don't even need a computer to tell you this so let's say we don't need a value let's, let's say we are taking um inputs from the user and then we, we we want to see or we want to compare so let's say um we take an input um, name we take the, the input name and then uh, let's let's store it in a string and then we say asset okay then we say asset and then uh then another name or let's say username username the username that is stored on the computer so we want to check whether the username the the user um is is provided is on the computer otherwise so 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 let's 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 see um so let's say the user enters something like uh i don't know let's say coffee the user enters coffee so now we can use a comparison operator to check if these two usernames are the same okay so what we um the way to do that is we say name okay so name then um our equality operator which is um, double equal sign or two equal signs and then we say so name equal to username isn't is so what so basically what we are asking our python interpreter is is the name the user um, is providing equal to the username that we have on our you know um, on our computer so when we run this we say it is false it is false okay so um then we can then tell the computer the username doesn't exist like it, 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 the username doesn't exist uh, okay so that's basically how you go about doing things okay so this is comparing strings we can compare numbers you can compare um the different types of values we have in, in python okay so let's say um age okay so maybe age no let's let me just use x and y for now so let's just say x is equal to what um as you saw earlier on in the slide x is equal to 10 and then y is equal to what 20 okay so in order to check let's check is x and y equal let's assume you don't know the values of x and y so and you want to check whether they are equal so you do that by saying x then our equality operator and then y and then when you print this out you see that we get false x and y are not equal x is 10 y is 20 that's not equal okay and the next operator is not equal or the inequality symbol um and then if for this for this for this operator if the values of the two operands are not equal then the condition rather becomes true so earlier on we saw um, x and y not being equal because they are actually not equal now if you want if, if you want to check again if, if you want to check whether they are not equal okay 
we can come and say um x then um the inequality symbol is um, an exclamation mark and then equal sign then um the right hand operator okay and then it will compare whether whether the two are equal and then when we when we run this we get true because it is actually true because um x is not equal to y so we get true okay then the next one is greater than operator okay so if the value of the left hand operand is greater than the value of the right hand operand the condition becomes true okay so let's let's quickly do that in python so uh let's say x we we have x to be equal to 10 and y to be equal to 20. so we if, if we want to check whether um x is greater than y okay so what we just do is x we have we have the interpreter x is s greater than y and when we run this we get false because x is in actual sense not greater than y and then the other one too is the less than operator and then um this will give us true because x is less than y and then we also have greater than or equal to less than or equal to these work perfectly like just as we know it in our basic math or in our basic um, algebra okay all right so let's let's look at assignment operators the assignment operator which is the equal sign assigns the values on the right hand side of the operator to the operands on the left hand side of the operator so eg score is equal to 90 uh, we use this when we are basically um creating variables okay so values and variables you know we, we assign a value to a variable that's where we use assignment of operators we can we can also do multiple assignments okay earlier on earlier on um we saw we saw that we we use two lines to say x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 20 we can do all of these in one line okay so what we to do that we just we just say x then comma y then it's equal to then you say 10 comma 20 okay always 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 make sure, just make sure that um, the number of values you have on the left is the same as the number of values on the right. So what it does is it will assign the first value to the first um, variable you have, and then it keeps on going to the last. Okay. And then um, let's 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 check if 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 that actually works. So because we we can check if x is less than y, and then uh, we get true because x is 10 y is 20. now we have to be careful because the assignment operator and the comparison the the equality comparison operators might sometimes confuse you you might sometimes want to compare but instead of using the comparison operator the equality operator you go you go and use the assignment operator the equal sign instead of two equal signs so take note of that um that might cause problems for you very very soon but it's, it's understandable so just um always 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 have this in the back of your mind and just work things out for yourself don't don't get frustrated never okay now let's let's see how we can easily increment values so um let's say um you're writing a program maybe for an online voting system okay and then uh you have your candidate candidate a okay so um you want to write your program in such a way that for every vote you, he gets um what you do is you fetch the previous result okay you fetch the previous result and then you you add one to it and then you save it in the candidate's name okay so let's say we have our candidate let me clear this so let's say we have our candidate uh what do i call him let me call him Kofi. Okay, so for now, Kofi has 10 votes. Kofi has 10 votes for now. And let's say um, Abena comes and votes for Kofi. Okay, so Abena votes for Kofi. So that means Kofi has one vote. So to do this, we are, we are going to say Kofi, Kofi will now be equal to the previous value of Kofi. So let's, we do that by getting the previous value of Kofi. So we say Kofi is equal to Kofi okay that would, that would actually get the previous value of coffee and we want to increment this by one we can increment it by two but since i've been just one person we say by one plus one okay when we do this 
let's let's print the value of coffee again and then we see that we get 11 for coffee so when we run this we see that coffee now becomes 11 so that's how you can increment things in python so you you fetch you fetch the previous value and then you add to it okay um but this is actually uh a bit longer and sometimes it's not easily understandable python in python you can you can actually do this in in a much more simpler way so so um, in, in order to get the same output what you just say is coffee plus and equal to one okay so coffee plus equal one or plus equal the number you want to increment it by so this this will just do the same thing as we saw earlier on um it will fetch the previous value of coffee okay and then add one to it and then it will reassign it to coffee again okay so when you print out coffee again we get the same value 11 okay so you, if you want to increment it by five let's say abner's vote is what five votes so when you run this you get 15 now okay and um in, in the same way you can you can also decrement values so in this in this sense you just say um coffee minus equal to five so minus equal to five will decrement coffee's votes by five maybe spoiled ballots um so you are you are removing the spoiled ballots from coffee's votes and then we get um in order to do this quickly in python you just say coffee minus equal five and then that will um decrease co coffee's votes so when we run this we get five and this is true for all the um the arithmetic operators we saw the arithmetic operators we saw earlier on um subtraction multiplication so we can we can we can also say coffee then uh times equals five and then when we run this we get 50. okay so basically well, um, what we are doing is we are getting the value the previous value of coffee okay and then uh with our arithmetic uh, sorry with our arithmetic um operator whatever arithmetic operator we are putting in there whether subtraction addition multiplication um division name it then uh and then our our value you know the value we either want to multiply it by or add it by or subtract it by or just whatever and then uh with that value and then uh we do we do the mass and then we reassign it to our variable again which here is coffee so that's how you can quickly do this uh, basic arithmetic operations in python now now that we know about the various operations we can perform in python let's take a look at conditional execution very soon as i said earlier on we are going to start writing code that would actually do that will actually start doing things instead of just prints and inputs okay so let's say you take um you know um, input from the user and if then you compare you compare the input and if um the what you're looking for is true then you do this and if it is false then you do that okay so that's why you need conditional execution so let's see a boolean expression is an expression that is either true or false okay so earlier on earlier on with the um with the comparison of um operators we, that we wrote a couple of um boolean expressions where we said three you know um three not equal to two and then that gave us true that's a boolean expression where we also said um three greater than two where we also said two less than three that's those are boolean expressions because um the value or it is either true or false it, it 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 evaluates to either true or false okay now there are three logical operators which are and or and not we will see how to use that um, very soon but like the semantics meaning of these operators is similar to their meaning in english for example x is greater than zero and less than 10. Um, what this basically means is we are looking for x values um between 0 and 10 so from 1 to 9 the this would actually um, um evaluate to true so let's say we have a variable so let me um so let's say x is equal to 11 let's say 3 okay so now let's let's print or let's let's assign this to a, uh, um, 
a variable named output so let's assign it to assign this to a variable named output so we assign output is equal to um then we ask our operator whether x is greater than zero and and what and, le, and x again is less than what 10. okay i don't know if you can actually do this let's see what why pycham is pycham is one in s okay no no problem no problem then let's print out our, our output so let's print output okay sorry output okay so when we run this we get true we get true because um three is actually between zero and ten so these are how you can use logical operators okay so x x is greater than zero yeah and then x is less than zero so this this expression will be true if both um conditions are met um if if it happens that um let's say it, it was minus three here okay if, if it is minus three here this will be um, false because with the end operator both conditions have to be true both conditions have to be true for the end operator so um if you are saying x is greater than zero minus three is less than zero so when, when we run this code we see that we get false because both conditions have to be true okay and then um the same way for the end operator both just take note for the end operator both conditions or both the conditions you are comparing so you can you you can you can you, you can always use these logical operators to compare two you know our two conditions okay so let's say um you are you are you are writing maybe um a piece of software and then on your login page you want to check whether the username you know is is equal to the username you have and the password is equal to the password you have so you can you can simply come and say then you take um you, you can simply write the code then with your input statements you take the input or you, you take the username and the password from the user then you store them in variables then when you are done then you come and compare you know you compare you compare them with the username and password that you already have on the system and then you compare using the um the quality operator then you compare and see if they are equal so we can say um yeah um, username is equal to the username that we already have and password equal to the password we already have okay because you need both conditions to be true before um you can grant the user access so if both conditions are true then uh you do what you, do, you know you go to the next step and if both conditions are not true you get false and then you see um you either tell the um, tell the user incorrect username or password and, and like that's 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 basically how programmers and programs work okay the next one too is all okay so with all um just one of the conditions have to be true so it's either the first condition or the, the second condition so let's say uh if i if i if i come here and i change the end to all we see that we get true because with with all we need just one condition to be true okay so when i run this we get true because um in actual sense minus three is less than 10 so we get true so and for um let's take note for and we need both conditions to be true and for all when we are using logical operator all we need just one condition to be true and then um what not does is um it kind of like negates the second uh the second condition okay so what that does is if the first condition is true and the second one is you know uh, false then you get true okay so let's say um x is greater than three okay so let's say we are we have three here three or maybe let's let me make this 11 and i say so x x is greater than zero and not sorry not x is less than 10. uh well uh, let's let's 
you get the basic idea but PyCharm is warming is, is actually warning me that um, there's an error here which I know there is an error but when when you start to write um, the if if statement you see you'd actually see um, talk about the not you know um, expressions okay or the not operators so let me, let me see let me see if I can do this so when I say not okay okay so okay um let's we can do it this way let's say not what not what what not not does is it negates the condition to the right of it okay so um not x is greater than zero now this condition will be true if x is actually not greater than zero okay now when i run this i get false because x is 11 and 11 is greater than zero okay but when i say minus 11 minus 11 is not greater than zero so we get true because they are saying not that value okay so x x equal to minus 11 and then we are saying not x okay so not not x greater than zero so what it does is if x is greater than zero it will negate it okay so x is so the thing is is x greater than zero is x is, is x greater than zero and we know minus 11 is not greater than zero which is false so it will negate it or it will it will just um it kind of like switches it if it is true it says false if it is false it says true in that sense now in order to write useful programs we almost always need the ability to check conditions okay i already said this earlier on and change the behavior of the program accordingly conditional statements gives us this ability the simplest form is the if statement okay um, so let's say x is equal to 10 and we are saying if x is greater than 0 print x is positive let's say you are writing a program that will check um, whether um, um, the given value is, is, is either positive or negative so let's say our x here let's let's leave it as it is okay so let's say our x here is equal to minus 11 now we can we can we we can check for this we can actually check if um if the value is positive or negative using the if statements and the way they um the syntax for the if statement is um you just write if then uh you leave a space then the condition okay the condition um the condition um we can we, we can simply do this with our comparison with the comparison operators we saw earlier on so we say if x is equal to zero because positive numbers are greater than or equal to zero okay so if if x is greater than zero or let me see if x is greater than or equal to zero okay now if this condition is true you see that when you press enter um pycharm automatically indents your code for you that means that whatever is um whatever you want to write next is going to be under the if statement or is going to be in the if block or is going to get executed only if um, this condition x is greater than or equal to zero is true so let's let's just say print uh, let's print message so let's print x x is positive okay so um what this means is we will we, we will only get um a result on the screen if and only if x is greater than or equal to zero so that this is basically the syntax of the if statement so we say if then then our condition is you know then uh, then a colon and then uh pycharm automatically indents that for us and in our block of code so the block of code will get executed if our condition is true otherwise um whatever we have in there in the if block wouldn't get executed so you, so in order to get out of this block just press and enter and then you can you can backspace and then you you know you are you are basically out of the um the block so let me let me add something here to actually show that um we are we've moved out of our our, our if block here so so let's say out out of the if block out of the if block okay now when we run this when we run this we see that we only get one 
print out which is out of the if block because x is minus 11 and minus 11 isn't greater than or equal to 0 so um, our print x is positive doesn't get executed because it is in the if statement and this will only um, um, this, this will only get executed if the condition is true but in this in this sense our condition is false so it doesn't get executed okay so um, and then we see that it, um, it it then skips or it moves out of that block and then it continues executing the rest of the code that is why we have this print out of the if block here um, you know I'm um, working for it so you have to you have to always check the indentation um, if I if I if I come here and I in, in, indent this if I press tab and I indent th this and then I run we don't see anything we don't get any result because the, the Python in interpreter will see this to be part of the if block so in, so take note when you want to leave the um, a block of code just um, change the in, in indentation okay so if x is greater than or equal to zero print x is positive and then uh, then you write whatever you want to write there and if you want to leave the you know that block of code just um, backspace uh, you know or just remove the indentation and then uh, what Python does is um, it uses indentation and white uh, you know white space to um, um to preach or like to to show code read readability okay um, um python preaches code, code readability a lot that is why it uses white space and indentations so always always take notes uh, in in other pr um, programming languages maybe like um programming languages like c or java um you would use um curly brackets okay um to indicate um a block of code by in python we use in the indentation so please take note of that so print print so um we saw the if syntax and we are saying um to do this or to um to do con conditional execution um using the if statement we say if then uh, our condition and then it's and then a colon and then um, whatever we want to get executed if our condition is true okay now let's see what if our condition isn't true okay you know um, I can add the user for a value you know and then I if the if if if, if the um, if the value isn't um, if the value isn't positive I don't I don't I don't tell the user anything I just you know end the program like that the user would be annoyed that isn't very very good user experience at all so at least we have to be able to tell the user something at least uh maybe your you know the number you provided is negative is negative okay so that is where we introduce the else statement okay that is where we introduce the else statement and with this we can just after our, after 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 our our if statement we can just come and say else then a colon and then we also start another block of um, code here which is um, which will be our else block so else then we print we print um, x is negative okay x is negative so what the, what this means is if we are basically telling the Python to, um, interpreter if x is greater than or equal to zero then we print x is positive else that means if our condition is false okay then we print x is negative so take note the if statement we have um, the syntax for that is if then condition and if the condition is true um, whatever code is in the if block will, will get executed and if the condition is false that is where we we have to um, we have to introduce the else statement and then we say print you know um, another 10 uh, so now we still have our x to be minus 11 okay so when I when I when I when I run this code we see that it's, it tells us x is negative what this does is it takes the value the, the, the value of x which is minus 11 then it compares is x greater than or equal to 0 no that is false so then it, it, it skips um, whatever is in the if block and then goes goes to uh, goes to the else and then um, it prints that um, or it, 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 it executes whatever is in the else um, else block so if I come and make this 11 
and I run this. We see that now we have um, x is positive. Okay, um, and in this same way we can we can use it um, to check for uh, a more you call it um, you know uh, whether um, a number is even or odd. Okay, so we know for um, even numbers, uh, even numbers are numbers that are, that when divided by zero. Um, there's 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 no remainder. Okay, so hey, sorry when divided by two rather when divided by two There's no remainder so two can go into the number without any remainder So we can use our modulus um, operator here and we know uh, what the mod what the modulus operator does is um, it it um, It divides the numbers um, and then returns the remainder Okay, and what we are saying is um, uh, let's. Uh, what we are saying is, um, is, is, is uh, the even numbers. The remainder, when the, when you take that number divided by two, the remainder should be zero. Okay. So with our modulus operator here, let me clear this. With our modulus operator here, so we can say x mod our percent sign mod two. Okay. So we so we say if x mod two. Is equal to zero. Okay. Note how we are able to combine these two types of operators, which is the mode operator and then the equality operator. So what we are saying is that 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 forms our condition. Okay. So what we are saying is if x mode two is equal to zero, okay, then we say print x is even. Okay. So we are saying if x mode two and x mode two it will take um, whatever number or whatever value of x and then divide it by 2 and then the remainder it then it then takes the remainder and then it compares whether it is equal to 0 and we know even numbers the remainder if, if the number is even the remainder will be the, sorry the remainder will be, would be 0 and if um, x is odd the remainder will be um, something else okay so if x is equal to um, sorry if x mode 2 is equal to 0 then we say x is even else if it is not 0 if x mode 2 is not 0 then we say our number is what is odd okay so let's run this 11 is an odd number when we run we see x is odd so if I make this 10 and I run 10 is even Okay, so this, this is basically how you do conditional execution and uh, your Python programs are just are going to contain a lot of this. Trust me, programs are just a couple of if and else statements. If this is that, this is that. If that is this, then you know, do this. If this is this, do that. If that is that, then do that. Just um, take input from the user, then you say if, you know, if this is that, if the input you are getting is like this, then you tell the program to do this, or go this, or go here, or, you know, say this, or say that. That's, that's basically what your programs are going to be about. Okay, we well, we've, we've already seen this. Okay, now, um, Let's say sometimes there are more than two possibilities. Um, we only saw um, positive and you know negative numbers, and or in, in 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 the next example we also saw um, even or odd numbers. Okay. Now let's let's just imagine. Um, what would we do if 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 like if the conditions were many? You know, like in real world scenarios. We are going to have many many condi um, conditions okay so we and we would have to check for these we would have to check for all of these conditions that is why we can uh, one way to express a computation like that is using a chained conditional so we can we can change we, we can change the, uh, you know um, the conditionals okay so the syntax for that is if the condition then colon and then um, the block of code and then to check for the next condition then we say l if what l if um stands for is the is the abbreviation for else if okay so it is it, it, it has it, it it has been else if has been abbreviated to l if so l if x is greater than y then we we do we do something else l if condition 
then you do something else then it continues it continues like that L if you can have as many as as many L ifs as you want you know so far as you know your, you know your conditions are keep going just keep adding your L if L if L if and then uh, finally you can you can end it with an else statement or you can just decide to just leave it leave it like that at the L if no problem with that so let's 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 see the example we have here we are saying if x is um is less than y then we say press uh sorry then we say print x is less than y okay and we are saying if x is greater than y then we say print x is greater than y so let's say our x is 10 y is you know 20 once again so um let's go to pycharm so in pycharm let's say our x x is equal to 10 and then y is equal to 20 okay now let's 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 demonstrate what um it would be like if we were going to use chained you know conditionals to check whether x is greater than y or whether x is less than y or, or whether x is equal to y okay so we we'll, we we'll do that by saying if there are condition we our condition is, is is x greater than you know y and if x is greater than y then what do we do we print uh x sorry let's make it let's make that a string then we say x is greater than y okay so i forgot to add a t there okay so if x is greater than y then we print this out l if else if l if okay so l if x is less than y and what do we say sorry and what do we say um print print um x is less than y okay maybe x is not greater than y or x is not less than y x is equal to y okay so if if our x is equal to y let's let's do that so else that means if all these conditions are aren't met if all these conditions aren't met what do we do then we print um x is equal to y Okay, so um, that's that's basically how you do it. So um, we check, we check, we, we check for the conditions. If the condition, if this condition is true, then you do this. If this condition is not true, then you do that. If that condition is true, then you do that. Okay. So what is what this does is first of all it checks if x is greater than y, then it prints x is greater than y. But in, in actually sense here. Um, our x is 10 and our y is 20 10 is no greater than 20 then uh, because of that the the first if statement doesn't get executed because it executes to false or it evaluates to false so it doesn't get the condition evaluates to false so it doesn't get executed because of that it moves to the next statement or to the next condition then it checks and if x is greater is, is less than y and here we see x is actually less than y so this evaluates to true and since it's, it since it evaluates to true um, um this will get executed okay the second block of code will get executed you know just we have to take note in this if else um statements only one take note only one will get executed it's either if or else or l if or just one of the l ifs. if you have if you have hundred l ifs the first condition that evaluates to true will get executed okay so always take note the first condition that evaluates to true will get executed so let's say i i i have like three or four l ifs okay um if one l if block gets evaluates to true if the condition for that evaluates to true that will get executed and the rest will be forgotten then it just continues you know it just it just leaves the if the, the if the if statement it just 
um, leave that condition aside and then he moves to the next part of the code. So let's say we had maybe I have, I have another, another, another print statement here. So print something. <laughs> so print something. I don't, I don't know what, what thing, but something. So um, what this will do is once any of these, once any of these conditions evaluate to true, okay, and the block of code gets executed, it skips whatever is left in in this conditional statement. So it's, it skips whatever. So even if the first statement is, you know, is true, it will just, you know, um, execute that block of code and then leaves the early and then, you know, the else and then just come here and then print something. Okay. So when we run this, we see that X is less than Y and then, you know, the, the code continues down to the end. And uh, we can we can also um, nest con like these conditional statements. One one conditional statement can also be nested within an another. You know we could have written it like this, where we say x if x is equal to y, then we say print x and y are equal. Else if x is less than y, then we say print x is less than y, and else print x is greater than y. So um, we can we can actually nest these conditions together so maybe um when i'm checking let's say when i'm checking first of all i want to check if if both um both values are equal so i'll just say if x is equal to y okay then i'll print x and y are equal so x is equal to y Okay, and then um, else if they are equal, then we check which one is greater. Okay, so in order to this, we can we can we can nest these conditions together. Okay, so we can nest one condition or one conditional statement. Sorry, we can nest one conditional statement inside another conditional statement. So we do that by saying else. Okay, then we can we can start another if if statement here. Then if x you know is greater than y then we print x is greater than y okay and then yes we can also have our our else else x is less than y Sorry, sorry. Um, we are already saying else here. Okay, so we can we can use our our add if. Okay, because we want to be able to add our condition. So if x is less than y. Okay, then our colon. Then we print something. So we print something. Uh, x is less than y. Then we run it. We can run it like this, and then we see we get we get we get the same output. So that's this is how we can nest um, one conditional statement inside another. Okay, so we can also nest you know something else inside this. So I can inside this inside this block of code again. I can nest another um, if else statement there. You are advised to um, stay away from nesting as much as you can. That doesn't mean you shouldn't you shouldn't nest. You you might have to nest sometimes, but you don't have to nest unnecessarily. Try avoiding that. That would make your code cleaner and much more readable for you, or probably for somebody else. Note we are we are not doing this for yourself. You know, um, let's say you are working in a company as as a programmer. You know, um, you'd have to share your work with someone, and if uh, another person takes your code and he or she doesn't understand what you've done, then uh, it's going to be a lot of trouble for you or for the company because you, you'd waste your time, you know, explaining what is happening and what is not happening. And um, 
is a whole lot so let's try to make your code and much more understandable in such a way that when someone else takes your code without in your absence he or she can understand what you did so that will be all for now that will be all for now so so i'll meet you guys um okay so that that will be all for now i've decided to um record a separate video for our project so that would that would follow this video so um just just stay tuned and you would have it very very soon okay so um thank you guys for, for staying with me i guess i'll see you guys again later thank you